Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Nightface bringing you my Stranger Things season three review. I binge watched the hell out of it, all eight episodes uh, yesterday. There's a reason why I couldn't get it out the same day. Uh, some stuff went down. If you want to stay at the end of my video after the review is over, I'll let you know when the review is done. I'll fill you in what's been going on, you know, personal life and stuff. But uh, that being said, let's just dive right into the review. First five minutes, as always, will be non-spoiler. Then after the five minute mark, I'm going to dive all up into the spoilers. There's a lot to cover, so this might go over 30 minutes. <laughs> just saying. Uh, I'm going to try to do my best to keep it condensed. And uh, yeah, give me my overall thoughts and impressions, as I always do. And score. So yeah, I was... <laughs> It's an understatement to say I was looking forward to this. It's one of my most anticipated shows or seasons like ever, just as high up there in the pedestal as Game of Thrones. Unfortunately, Game of Thrones disappointed me. So I was really looking forward to Stranger Things to fill that void, to you know not let me down. And it didn't. It lived up to everything I wanted and more and just subverted my expectations. This is easily... The best season of Stranger Things, hands down. And, you know, it's just the story, the direction, the massive production design that it went, that went in, into this uh, particular season with the Starcourt Mall was just amazing. You could tell they really upped the ante in their budget, and they really stepped up the game. Uh, the Duffer Brothers, my God, they really outdid themselves with this season. It just delivered on everything that made the first two seasons so great and dense some I'm telling you uh, yeah so it was a great way to celebrate 4th of July believe me when I say I did not want to go to my family barbecue but yeah I ended up going anyway and had a good time and stuff but you know as soon as the partying was done I wanted to re-binge keep binge watching uh, Stranger Things you know because that's how good it was uh, it dropped 3 a.m. Uh, 4th of July. Ended up waking up at 6 a.m. to start the binge, you know. <laughs> and each episode, each episode was just so well paced, fast paced. The way each episode wrapped up, you just you could not stop watching. You just wanted to keep watching uh, more. And that's what uh, Stranger Things really excels at. You know, it just you just so connected with all these characters. You know, like. Um, Max, Mike, Will, uh, Eleven, you know, Steve, Dustin, seeing them all back, Hopper, Joyce, it's great. Uh, I love these characters to death. So even in the slower episodes, like episodes one through four, I was still so entranced. I was so in it because of these character interactions. You know, the 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 whole season they didn't kick into full gear. I say it until uh, episode four. Everyone's saying episode four, and I agree. That's where all the action and thrills really kick into overdrive. And, but even the episodes before that, they were still very strong and solid for character development and the character arcs and the stories and the groups that were, were being set up. Even with the new characters, I love the introduction of new characters like uh, Robin. She, was, she could hold her own with Dustin and Steve. I love that trio. They need a spinoff. And yeah... It's just, oh, it was everything I wanted. It was so good. I loved it. It just, this is easily a 9.5 out of 10. The reason why I won't get a 10 out of 10 is, is a minor little nitpick is Nancy and Jonathan Byers' uh, storyline, their story arc, them investigating, wasn't the most compelling. They had the weakest, uh, you know, plot thread, in my opinion, compared to everyone else that was just highly entertaining. Even Billy! Billy as an antagonist here in this season had a lot more to do and I really like what they did with his character as well and yeah it's just you know the whole thing with the mind flare returning and just causing havoc and Hawkins again and also uh, <laughs> Hopper the best sheriff ever you know just I love uh, his interactions with Joyce um, they have a cute little uh, off and on like like friendship that may develop into a relationship going on there and I really like what they did just with everybody just everybody really brought their a-game the acting everything was superb and I loved every minute of it if you haven't seen Stranger Things season three 
and you're a fan of this show, what are you waiting for? Start binge watching it right now. I guarantee you, once you're done, you're gonna go. You're wanna. You're gonna want to start it back up again. Trust me, I know I did. So yeah, it's a 9.5 out of 10, near perfect. This is like the best season of Stranger Things, hands down, the best season. So, boom, there's my review, non-spoiler. Now we're gonna dive into all the spoilers. I'm gonna try to recap this season episode by episode, starting with episode one, titled "Susie, Do You Copy?" Now. I love the intro. Uh, we get the Russians introduced, which is very fitting, being that it's the 80s era. And a lot of the 80s era, the Russians were the bad guys, you know, so it makes sense that they would take it down this route, which I didn't, I did not mind at all, because, I mean, you think of movies like Red Dawn, and, I mean, Rocky IV, you know, Ivan Drago, you know, the Soviet Union and all that stuff. So it's like, yeah, why, why wouldn't the Russians be uh, one of the main villains this season, so... Of course, they're fiddling with something they shouldn't be messing with. They got like this uh, EMP rail gun trying to open up the the gateway. And uh, they're doing it in Russia. So we get that and then it, it just explodes and just evaporates, just disintegrates all the uh, Russian scientists in the hazmat suits. And that was just a stunning sequence, the, like the visual effects. There's a lot of great cinematography and camera work in this season. Like I, I really noticed, like the, like I'm telling you, the budget was just they they had a lot of money to play with uh, this season. So the almost two year wait was worth it. Oh my god, it was worth it because, like I said, the production design with Starcourt Mall, I loved it. It was like a character of itself. It's just, it was so good with the vibrant colors and. Yeah, you know, it just had a lot of personality, and I really like that. I really like when a show goes the extra mile, you know? And, yeah, so we get introduced back to our characters. I love that scene while Hopper eating Tostitos, watching TV, and then leaning back. He's like, hey, hey, the three, <laughs> leave the door open three inches, three inch rule. And he, he caught uh, Eleven making out with Mike. It's so funny. Oh, my God. Uh, I, re I really love those scenes. With uh, Hopper just stepping up being, uh, you know, being a dad. <laughs> being the overprotective dad. And it makes sense because that's just within Hopper's personality. And it just made for some great comedic moments, you know. <laughs> especially when he goes to Joyce and she tells him about the heart to heart. And he's like, well, what the hell is that? <laughs> you know, he tries to do it. But then he's just like, nah, uh, you're your grandma. Nana is sick. Yeah, come on. And he's like, all right, listen. All right, I will allow you to date my daughter if you listen to me. <laughs> you do what I say. It was great. Um, and also, I really like uh, Max and Eleven's friendship. Their bonding was one of the highlights of the season. Oh, man, these two girls, they were just besties right off the bat. It, it was great. I love that. I love that Max got a lot more to shine in this season. And who better than with Eleven and her... Taking Eleven to to the mall, them shopping in the second episode. I'm, I know I'm jumping ahead. Uh, it's a lot to cover. Like I said, second episode, the mall rats. Love that uh, episode where, you know, Max is hanging out with Eleven. She has a bestie. They're doing some funny shenanigans in the mall, trying on clothes, uh, taking taking pictures, and then messing with some, you know, bitchy preppy girls. <laughs> Eleven using her powers to explode the soda. Love that. And then I love. Love when Eleven tells Mike. I know a lot of people that ship Mike and Eleven. And I do ship him. But it was just a funny moment. It was just like, oh shit. When she said it. When Eleven uh, tells Mike, I dump your ass. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh. It was so funny. Uh, yeah, And the Mike is just all distraught. Like, whoa. <laughs> but that's not teenage romance. It is like, you know, young love. So complicated sometimes. And when it doesn't need to be. So funny. And, of course, Max is the one coursing the whole thing. You know, it's like, dump his ass. He's treating you like garbage. You know, let me uh, tone down the microphone there. I forgot to tone it down a little bit. But, anyway, yeah, a lot of great character interactions. Uh, another nitpick of mine is that Will didn't have much to do this season. Um, I know I really was looking forward to him doing much more because he's just been, like, the victim these past two seasons, like, the... Uh, the first season, uh, it was about where's Will Byers? Oh, he disappeared trying to find him. 
Then the second season, he gets possessed, right, by the mind flare and all that. Then the third season, all he's doing is getting goosebumps, like the, the spidey senses. He's just like, oh, oh, doing a lot of this. Like, oh, take a shot every time Will Byers strokes his, his neck, like checking those goosebumps. Like, oh. <laughs> I'm like, come on, man. You got to give my boy Will something more to do, you know. So I wish uh, Will got more to do. And then Nancy and Jonathan Byers storyline then. You know, working for the papers and, you know, Nancy. They call her Nancy Drew. <laughs> I don't know if that's really her her last name, but I'm pretty sure they're just saying that. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, the guy's just messing with her. You know, she's just delivering their lunch, and they don't take her serious. Um, you know, when when she tries to speak up, it was a funny scene when the, the one asshole guy, uh, I know he's a busy. That actor looks so familiar. I think he was in Starship Troopers. Well, there are a lot of familiar actors from, like, the 80s in, in here. He does start Trip Troopers was in the 90s. But I'm pretty sure they put him in here because of his filmography. That guy must have been... He must have done some uh, 80s films in his uh, line of work. But anywho, that guy was like, Yeah, let's investigate the case of the missing condiment. Where's my mustard? <laughs> what a fucking dick. It was so funny, though. Couldn't help but laugh. Uh, yeah, poor Nancy can't catch a break and they don't take her serious so she tries to investigate you know with some weird things and hawk and some strange things you know and Jonathan is just in the photo room you know just doing his thing really not taking what Nancy is saying to him serious I just I don't know it just didn't enthrall me as much as the other storylines that were much more entertaining and yeah so that was like the weakest uh, storyline portion I mean even I was fascinated by what they did with Billy. Did not like his character uh, last season, but they gave him a lot more layers this season. I was just blown away. That actor is great. He was in the Power Rangers remake. I'd like to see more of him because he brought his acting chops. Everybody did. I mean, Eleven, of course. Millie Bob Brown is always... Uh, she's one of the best emotional uh, kid actors. Uh, she's not even a kid anymore. Everyone's so grown up now. Um, you know, people say it was jarring, but I don't know. I think... That's why I really enjoyed it more seeing these characters mature and evolve and literally grow up before our eyes. Um, yeah, it just made it, it just made it more enthralling, you know, this story this time around. So, because we we like used to seeing them as kids in Stranger Things season one, and now they're they're almost looking like adults. It's, it's crazy, you know. But it, it has that like the sense of realism, like with the way time passes by. So I, I really dug that. I really dug it. Everyone's really coming into their own. Uh, you know, poor Dustin. Uh, great example of that is Dustin coming home. Uh, hilarious scene. I mean, you was spoiled in the trailer, but him macing, uh, <laughs> macing Luke is in the eyes with the Farrah Fawcett hairspray. Hilarious. I love that. And then the whole bit with Dustin having maybe an imaginary girlfriend. But it turns out, like, jumping ahead. Well, again, spoilers. His girlfriend is true. She exists. <laughs> uh, Susie, she exists. Uh, we'll get to that later. But, yeah, I like the whole bit because I, I, I was believing, too. Like, hey, uh, come on, Dustin. Do you really have a girlfriend? Like, uh, I was hoping he did, and it turns out he did. So I was happy about that. Yeah, so, and then, you know, like, all the 80s references and nostalgia Easter eggs. Like, them sneaking in to go see Day of the Dead was great. And I love that shot, Dad wide shot of um hawkins just be like the blackout that was great like oh my god that's what i'm telling you the camera work the cinematography like just panning around to um that empty warehouse where the mind flare is assembling a fleshy form through dead rats i mean the concept is just so bonkers but it works and it harkens back to movies like The Thing. I immediately thought of John Carpenter as The Thing, being that it takes place in the 80s. You know, the way the, um, the rats get blown up, and like inside out with their guts and all of the flesh, and it's forming. It's like it's building the mind flare slowly. At first, I, I, I wasn't sure. And then later on, you know, as he gets bigger, as, you know, the flay, they call him the... The humans that get the parasites in them and they're being controlled by the mind flayer when they start being sacrificed to build is enormous, fleshy, disgusting, like 
vessel. Oh man, that was that was nuts. I mean the Duff the Duffer brothers really outdid um, themselves. Um, I mean it does hit the the familiar beats like the previous two seasons, but there was just so much more here. You know, it's oh man. Uh, another thing that I like what they did with the Russians, they introduced this one guy. Well, two two Russian uh, characters that stood out was Alexei, aka Smirnov, this is a Russian scientist. Uh, I love um, Hopper's bit with him, and uh, when they go to what's his name? I'm jumping ahead. I don't know. Uh, Mor Maury Bowman, aka Bald Eagle. <laughs> I love that guy. Uh, he was in previous season. Love that guy with the beard, bald head. Uh, he, can, he can speak Russian, and uh, it's great. I love them bringing him back and giving him more integral part this season, much more to do. And then we got uh, this Russian Terminator, literally the Russian young Arnold Schwarzenegger lookalike. I was just blown away. And you, it's so obvious um, they're referencing the Terminator because, I mean, just the freaking outfit he's wearing looks exactly like the one Arnie wore in the first Terminator. Uh, you know, Grigori or whatever. Yeah, that Russian guy. I mean, he has the, the jaw, the, the face, you know, like the flat top. <laughs> he looks exactly like Arnie. He could be Arnie's stunt double. I mean, am I, it's crazy. It's just, it was mind-boggling. I was like, this guy is really, he's like if the Terminator... And uh, Yvonne Drago from Rocky Four had a baby. It would be this freaking guy. <laughs> so, I mean, and I love that fight. And I think it was episode three uh, when he first encounters him. I mean, he really is the Terminator. He beat this sh I mean, he whoops. He whoops that ass. He whoops Hopper's ass so bad. Oh, man. Hopper can't catch a break. And I, and I love Hopper's relationship with Joyce. Uh, him wanting to start something with her. And it makes sense these two characters have been so close. And it also makes sense that she's still reeling uh, from the loss of Bob. So I like what they did with their characters. You know, him going to Enzo's and him being stood up. Then her just going to him to, you know, to try to figure out what's been going on, what's been happening in the town. Um, uh, yeah, just so much. And then, like, uh, Dustin, Steve... And this new girl, Robin, were my favorite uh, pairing. They were my favorite trio, especially when, uh, what's her name? Lucas' sister, Erica. Holy crap. Just, wow, blown away by this uh, kid actor. She really, <laughs> she was a savage, pretty much. Best way to describe her. You know, she tells Maury towards the end, she's like, you bald bastard. <laughs> she calls him a bald bastard. It's so funny. She, she, she gives no fucks. Like, she'll just tell you how it is. She's one of them kids. Um, had a lot of spunk and personality. At first, I really didn't like her character, but she really grew on me as the episodes progressed. Her uh, that, that conversation she had with Dustin later on in the episodes when they were in the vents, uh, and he calls her out and he says, you're a nerd because you do all these mathematical equations and all that stuff, and you like My Little Pony. You know, so, like, all the character conversations, moments, the dialogue so rich it's just so good so even if we you know slow things down from the action and the suspense and all the monster weird crazy you know stranger things kind of stuff you still get great character moments and, and i i just love it you know like <laughs> like with max and 11 having that sleepover and it's funny when hopper comes home he's like hey i thought oh should you need something no <laughs> and he'd rather have max uh, be with Eleven. He'd rather have a girl around Eleven. It's just such like a like a dad, you know. Um, and I love that man. I just my three favorite characters have to be Hopper, Eleven, and Steve. Man, Steve freaking Harrington. You know, I love what they did with his character. <laughs> Him working in the that sailor ice cream shop was great. And then them th that trio, uh, Steve, Robin, and uh, Dustin. Finding out that the Russians, <laughs> such a ludicrous uh, plot, but it works because it's freaking Stranger Things. It works. And it's so 80s. It's just so 80s. You just got to go with it because uh, a plot like this, story like this, what, what exists in the 80s, you know, where they have a Russian underground top secret facility underneath a freaking mall? Like, are you kidding me right now? <laughs> 
and it's great. You know, you just totally buy it. You just roll with it. Um, the funniest scene. And let me tell you something. The humor. Oh my god, the humor throughout always landed. Always landed, and that's a rarity with me because when it comes to comedy, it's very subjective. There's some shit that just, you know, like it just doesn't work. There's a lot of movies that just make me cringe because the jokes never land or they just try too hard. Everything floats so naturally, the dialogue. Uh, so kudos to Duffer Brothers or whoever wrote the script uh, for these episodes because, my God, I was laughing hysterically throughout so many moments. Uh, the way they were able to balance the humor and the dark, you know, stuff, the grim stuff, it was, it was great. Like, the best scene was with, um, and I, I know I'm jumping ahead episodes, it's probably like episode six, I think, um, when Steve is being interrogated by the Russians, and, uh, <laughs> and he's like pleading with them, I don't know nothing, you know, you guys like ice cream? I mean, you gotta try USS Butterscratch, I mean, it is a blast! And they just die laughing, like, ha, 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 USS Butterscotch, <laughs> I like this one. I, I could not stop laughing. It was hilarious. That that scene was gold. This is why I love Steve Harrington. He is the MVP, he is the boss, he is the GOAT. He's the greatest of all time. I would love to see a spinoff with Steve, Dustin, and, and Robin, and throw in Erica, just, just for the hell of it, because you earned your spot, kiddo. Uh, she was great as well. Uh, and the, the sequences with Eleven, like, using her abilities was, oh, it was even more epic and more badass. Like, I think episode four, the sauna test, when they locked, <laughs> they lure Billy in into the sauna. And they try to burn uh, the parasite, whatever, out of him. And he just starts, like, demolishing the door. He goes, he's just wailing on them. And it's just this intense battle between um, Eleven and uh, Billy now being controlled by the Mind Flayer. It's just that shot, that moment when she threw him against the brick wall, threw it. It was just oh, so good. So good. Like in episode five, the flayed when uh, Nancy, this is when Nancy and Jonathan finally, finally had, you know, something to do that was really thrilling and it was intense. And it reminded me of Halloween 2, like the hospital scene in Halloween 2, because it was like that with the lights flickering. It was like a horror movie. I really love that uh, aspect. And you had the, <laughs> those uh, douchebags from the newspaper office where she worked. Yeah, trying to kill them because they're being controlled, you know, by the mind flare. And they end up killing them. And she bashes that douchebag's brains in with the, <laughs> the fire extinguisher. So, yeah, she gets her payback on him. Uh, yeah, and then that, that slimy, like, sludge blob-looking thing forming, that monster was, it was nuts. And then Eleven throwing it out the window, and then it going splat. And that was just the intro to, uh, the, uh, I think the, the fifth episode? Yeah, the hospital scene? I was like, what? It's just amazing. I like this show. And I never, I never skip, never skip. The opening credits, you know, the do 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 damn, never skip it. It's a sacred thing. You just don't skip the Stranger Things opening intro. You know, I just I love it. <laughs> uh, as you can see, I got my pops here. I got Dustin. I got I got Eleven right here. Hopper right there, and the uh, Blu-ray of Stranger Things season one and two right over there. Uh, yeah, you, know, you gotta do my thing. Yeah, <laughs> but. Oh my god, there's just, like I said, there's so much to talk about. There's only eight episodes, but there's just so much to dive into. Like, oh man, I'm trying to think, what else did I... Uh, Carrie Ools, that actor, he was in The Princess Bride. Uh, underutilized, I mean, he was just a punching bag for Hopper. <laughs> uh, yeah, I really wanted him to have a role that he could really sink his teeth in, but he was just, as the mayor, as his, uh, I guess he was a corrupt mayor, but he was just disposable and... Like I said, underutilized. Some some characters felt underutilized, like Will and the Mayor. There was potential there to do more with those characters, but they didn't. Uh, I really ended up liking Alexi. <laughs> Surprisingly, a lot of these side characters they introduced, like Robin and Alexi, really grew on me. And then when Alexi dies, it was just kind of heartbreaking. You felt sorry sorry for the guy because he was just being introduced to American culture. He was eating a hot dog. He just won that game. He won the Woody Woodpecker. He likes cherry Slurpees, not strawberry uh, Slurpees from 7-Eleven. 
Yeah, and he ends up getting killed by uh, Russian Arnie, you know? Crazy. Uh, what else? Uh, God, so many good moments. So many good moments. Um, yeah, I I don't know why, but this time around, I really didn't buy Max and Lucas being a thing. I mean, so, I'm like, why does Max I'll take Lucas back? I mean, she should just be done with it because, like, Lucas acts like an idiot sometimes. <laughs> like, in the, the first episode when she's like, you drank all our water? And he's like, he spits it back in and gives it to her, like, as a way of joking. But if I were her, I would have slapped that flask up in his face. Like, what the hell, man? Real smooth, Lucas, you know? Um, we get stunning imagery, like, sequences where, uh, where, uh, sorry, Eleven, she goes into the Upside Down, uh, where she puts the blindfold, and then she just, you know, concentrates, and I love that whole sequence, it was, it was done so beautifully, when she goes into the beach, she dives into Billy's past, and this is, this is what I loved about Billy having so many layers, you actually find out why he is an asshole, why, you know, he was never an asshole to begin with, he was a sweet kid, but his mom got beat on by his abusive piece of shit, you know, father, and Eleven saw the whole thing, and that's why she left, you know, she left him, and then you see, she's going through his memories, and you see him, you know, wailing, and taking it out on kids, and then also taking it out on Max, you know, because she, she gets brought into it, into their family, and I, I really started feeling for Billy, especially his sacrifice at the end was very powerful. So kudos to the actor who played Billy. Really, uh, just a great performance. I was really surprised, blown away by what they did with his character. It was really tragic. You know, uh, seeing uh, Max's reaction to Billy actually doing something very noble and humanizing, uh, doing that self-sacrifice. When Eleven, you know, tells him about his mom. And, you know, it just, it gets to him in such an emotional level. And he snaps out of it and he's able to, in his last moments, uh, really save them. And it's so tragic because, you know, that's all Max wanted. It was just an older brother. And she got a shred of that and it was just sadly taken away. So, uh, yeah. And then also, yeah, the, the last episode, um, the Battle of Star Court, just the best episode. The best episode of the entire Stranger Things series where it all leads up and the the mind flare is like hovering over them over the mall just amazing CGI work amazing and the the episode before that episode 7 the bite where you know uh Lev's leg is messed up at, from that battle like in the cabin crazy just crazy like intense action there you know and nancy with the shotgun and luke is actually doing something helping out with the axe uh and then also which led to eleven losing her abilities which i thought was a really ballsy bald move um so it'll be interesting if they make a season four and because uh, eleven doesn't have her abilities anymore which i'm like wow but i'm really i really like that they, they took it there because, I mean, she's done so much for this group. She's been the prime defender. So it'll be interesting to see her, how she's going to uh, adapt without her powers. What is she going to rely on now, you know? So I, I thought that was amazing, the way they um, that happened. I was not expecting that. Uh, you know, and then we get more uh, uh, Hopper <laughs> taking out Russians like crazy with the AK. Uh, just, oh man, it, just to lead up everything. With um, Hopper and Joyce and Murray, Bald Eagle, <laughs> going underground to the Russian base while the kids were dealing with the Mind Flayer and Billy as well. And it was, <laughs> that whole scene was um, kind of odd though. When uh, um, Dustin started singing, uh, was it was like the Never Ending Story song <laughs> with Susie. So Susie's real. They, and she said, the whole thing was about the codes. She wouldn't give up the codes unless he sang the song. And I mean, it was hilarious. It was a WTF moment. It kind of took me out of the, you know, the the intensity kind of broke up because of that. But nonetheless, it was it was cute though. It was cute. It's just I don't know the timing of it. I don't know. 
<laughs> but anywho, you know, um, we got a rematch with Hopper versus you know, that was a great, intense um, hand-to-hand fight. Even before that, episode 7 in the fair, I love that scene with the, you know, the mirrors, like the Enter the Dragon style with Hopper uh, getting the drop on the Russian. It's like a holy shit moment. He shoots the Russian, you think he's dead, but no, he has bulletproof vest. In that moment, I was like, holy shit, he is the Terminator. Da dun 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 dun. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, this, this season just... Great moments. Just so many great moments. I can't praise this season enough. It really, really lived up to uh, the hype and the expectations. And yeah, I can't wait to, you know, rewatch it again. Now, as for Hopper's death, unfortunately, the moment was ruined for me. And, you know, when I end this review, I'll go into why it was ruined for me. Not that it was spoiled. It wasn't spoiled at all. Um... I'm just saying, like, it was ruined for me by somebody that was watching it with me. Well, we'll get into that. But uh, nonetheless, uh, it was very tragic, uh, sad. You know, I was not expecting Hopper to die. Joyce has to make that decision, so she does. And she, you know, uh, turns the key, both keys. and But they don't show Hopper evaporate. They don't show him disintegrate. You see a bunch of scientists, they, they're done, you know. And the machine explodes and close the gateway and the mind flare dies. And then we jump three months later and just I love his reaction to that. Oh, it just kills me. Again, Millie Bobby Brown, just just amazing actress. Uh yeah, so there's a lot of speculation now that Hopper may not be dead because of the end credits of the final episode. Uh yeah, they mention uh, not the American, the other guy, and then they feed him to one of those creatures from the Upside Down. Uh, he looks very similar to the first one. I guess the Demogorgon? Yeah. Like a white looking Demogorgon. Um, but yeah. So basically the buyers move out of Hawkins now. And Joyce adopts Eleven. So they say their goodbyes. Uh, they leave. Very sad. Uh, I love the U2 song they played. Great song choice with hero, you know, the heroes. I don't know if it's you two that sings that or somebody else. Um, I don't know. But I love that song. Great song choice nonetheless. Uh, very heartfelt scene. Especially when she finds uh, the note that Hopper... Well, that Joyce made for him. But he added more to it. Because, you know, it sounds like he just reading off a teleprompter. Which is so funny. Uh, and I love the last line. It was like, well, please, for, for your dad... Uh, keep the door open three inches. It was so cute. Oh, man. So it just broke my heart. You know, Hopper. Uh, having to bite the dust. But there's still hope. There's still hope. I don't know. if It would be a great idea to bring him back. Because it might ruin, you know, his... Because it was just such an emotional end to his character. And it was very fitting. So I don't know if bringing him back is the best idea, you know. But who knows? I mean, I love Hopper. I'm not saying no. I'm not dismissing it completely, but I'm just saying, you know, for, for the character and stuff going forward. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> They're going to have to really sell me on it, you know. But, um, uh, yeah, I really love this season. It is a 9.5 out of 10. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff that I get to cover. Oh, I love <laughs> I got to talk about Steve. And Robin's, uh, you know, psychedelic, trippy um, drug trip with the truth serum, which is hilarious. Oh, man, those, those two are just great together. Uh, and you thought they were going to, you know, be a couple, but surprisingly, I mean, I didn't see this coming, but Robin admits that she had feelings for um, this girl she had a crush on that had a crush on Steve. Uh, during high school, so the whole time you were led to believe that she had a crush on Steve, when really it was the, it was this girl that had a crush on Steve that she had a crush on, and then you find out that she is in fact a lesbian. Well, they never really flat out say she's a lesbian. She could be bisexual. I don't know. <laughs> There's still a chance, Steve. I'm just kidding. Uh, no, but it's great because like at least he has a friend, and they just their friendship is so amazing. So yeah, I would like to see her return back for season four. Like I said, I really enjoyed that dynamic, the interplay between Steve, Robin, uh, Dustin, and hell, even, uh, I almost forgot her name. 
Erica. And also the whole Karen Wheeler, you know, being a MILF, a hot MILF she is. Uh, <laughs> like the whole thing that we're led to believe that she's going to hook up with Billy and, you know, be a cheating housewife and all that went nowhere. It's kind of disappointing. I don't like it when they tease me like that. <laughs> I mean, if it happened, it happens. I mean, honestly, her husband is just like... He might as well just be part of the furniture because the guy has no fucking personality. It's like, no wonder she, she wouldn't uh, take swimming lessons at a Motel 9 or Motel 6, whatever. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know. But yeah, that went nowhere. So after that, they did nothing with her character at all. So I was just like, eh, okay. So, like, you know, things like that prevent it from being a perfect 10 out of 10. You know, uh, certain things they did with certain characters. There was potential there, but they just get sidelined. But, so, they got a little bit more to do than it would have been a perfect 10 out of 10. So, it's a 9.5 out of 10. Uh, enjoyed the season. Loved it. Loved these characters. And that's my review, guys. Uh, post your comments down below. Let me know. What did you think about Stranger Things Season 3? Did it live up to the hype? Is this your favorite season? How would you rank it? Uh, comment down below. Let me know. Now, the review is over. You want to click off? Made it this far. I really appreciate you guys. Um, now we're going to get into why. The, <laughs> the ending got ruined for me, that emotional moment. So it was it was about to happen, and I was, you know, I was getting teary-eyed. And I'll just say roommate, because somebody moved in with me. It's my current situation now. Uh, not my choice, you know, but I had no choice in the matter. But the person is living with me now, watching it, and he decided to be immature about it. And was mock crying. You know, like you mock her, like, <laughs> so what? Just fucking ruined the moment for me. And it's like, come on, you know, especially when you're waiting like a year and a half to watch this show and he acts like a fucking troll. So, yeah, I was peed off, you know, went to my room, slammed the fucking door. And uh, now I'm doing my review this morning because that person is not here. And, yeah, <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. You know, I don't like to talk about my personal life. You know, it could be stressful. It could be hectic, especially living with this person i'm trying to really do my best make the best of it but it's really hard to even do like reactions and reviews so you know i appreciate all my subscribers who you know stay subscribed who view my videos it really means a lot uh, thank you for for all your support it's what keeps me going it's what keeps me you know wanting to still provide and do reviews and reactions on this channel because movies and tv shows are my passion you already know that and this person obviously doesn't fucking get that doesn't respect that it is what it is you know I'll deal with it my way um, however I can I won't let that person bring me down because you know the, these kind of things mean so much to me so much more you know um, yeah so like that being said now you know why it was room for me and why my review is up is gonna be uploaded today Instead of yesterday when I finished binge watching Stranger Things Season 3. So, anywho, uh, post comments down below. Let me know um, how, what do you think about this season. Who is your favorite Stranger Things character? Like, top three. Uh, let me know if you're finding my channel for the first time. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, give this video a like if you want. And make sure you hit that notification bell as well. So you can stay tuned to any new videos that I post. And as always, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next one.